Hi, this is part four of Keena Ford and the Secret Journal Mix-Up. If you haven't read parts one through three, you might want to do that. Otherwise, just jump in where we are and enjoy Keena Ford's personality. All right, Thursday, November 18th, 10.30 a.m. I really hope I feel happy after Eric's special mission, because right now I don't feel happy at all. Today we got our jobs for when Bob Morgan from Bippo and Pecky comes to visit. My job is to say a little speech about friendship. Ms. Campbell said I can talk about why some of my friends are important to me. I would have liked my job of making a speech, except it has caused two problems. The first problem is that Tiffany and I have to write my friendship speech about her, or she will tell the bad stuff from my journal. The second problem is that I think Linny is feeling sad that I'm playing with Tiffany all the time now and not playing with Linny because she told me she wishes that we could play together sometimes. Then she said that if her job was writing a speech, she would write about me because she thinks I am a very fun friend and she thinks we have fun playing games like Foursquare and Airplane Twins. So now I don't know what to do for my speech. If I don't write it about Tiffany, she will tell everybody all my private stuff, and Linny might not be friends with me anymore. If I do write about Tiffany, then Linny still might not be friends with me anymore, because she might think I'm friends with Tiffany only. And I am not friends with Tiffany, not even for one second. Linny's job for the visit is to go get Bob Morgan from the school office and walk down the hall with him until he gets to our classroom. Tiffany's job is to ask some of the questions we all said. That's not a good job for Tiffany because she does not really like to ask questions. She just likes to boss people around all the time. 3.30 p.m. Eric is doing his special mission right now. I really, really hope he can get my journal back. 5.30 p.m. Eric got my journal back. He didn't give it to me yet, though. That is part of the plan. Tiffany is not supposed to know that Eric is giving the journal back to me. There are these video cameras in our building that make sure no robbers come in or that people don't litter. Eric said if the cameras see him bringing the journal to me, Tiffany might find out. So instead, Eric called me when he got home from Tiffany's. Mission accomplished, he shouted. And then he just hung up. I called him. I called him right back to ask him how he got my journal. At first, I was just looking around Tiffany's room, but I didn't see your journal anywhere. So I thought maybe she hid it somewhere, he said. He was breathing really loud like he had done a million jumping jacks. So I told her I wanted to play hide and seek. But Tiffany said no. She said we had to play princess rescue. Oh no, I said. It was kind of like hide-and-seek, except Tiffany was the princess who had been captured by the bad zoo guy, and she wanted me to be the prince who saved her, Eric told me. Yuck, I said. So I said no. I would only play if I could be Spider-Man, and she said okay. So I went out of the room, and she hid in the closet, and I knew she was in there because she kept making crying princess sounds, but I didn't rescue her. I just looked everywhere else in her room for your journal. But it wasn't anywhere. Eric was still breathing really loud. So then did you rescue her? I asked him. No, he said. She just kept crying louder and louder. And then she yelled, I am a beautiful princess trapped in a zoo. You better rescue me right now, Eric. And then her mom, mom came in and asked what was going on. And then she rescued Tiffany, even though she wasn't part of the game. And she said, if I could not behave, then I would have to go home. And she gave Tiffany some extra math to do. Then it got really boring. So when did you get my journal? I asked. I started to wish that I had not asked Eric how he got my journal. He was taking a very long time to explain it. So then I went to the bathroom. And when I came out, I saw there was a big bookshelf in Mrs. Harris's room, so I just went in her room, he said. Oh, no, I said. I could not believe it. Eric never did dangerous stuff like that. 
I saw that your journal was on the tippy top shelf, Eric said. So I climbed up the bookshelf like Spider-Man. Then I put the journal under my shirt. And as soon as I went back to Tiffany's room, I told her I had to go home because I felt very sick. And I was afraid I was going to throw up all over her bed. Good one, I told him. So like I said, mission accomplished, Eric shouted. And I said, good job. Then we hung up. I will never write anything bad about Eric in my journal ever again. He was so nice to get my journal back. The only problem now is that I won't be able to write in my journal at school because then Tiffany will know that Eric gave the journal back to me. And plus, Ms. Campbell thinks my journal is gone forever. 8.30 p.m. Since I didn't have my journal tonight, I was going to sit in bed and write my speech, but I was having a hard time getting comfortable. I tried to think of a more comfortable place to sit and write, and I decided that it would be more comfortable to sit in Brian's beanbag chair again. When I went to his room, he said, Oh boy, it's you again. Then he said, What, are you going to start coming in here every night? Okay, I said. I was happy that he invited me to start visiting every night. I walked right over to the beanbag chair and sat down. What's that notebook, Brian wanted to know. It's my journal for right now, I told him. I had some problems with my other one. I like that notebook much better, Brian said. It doesn't look so girly. When Brian says stuff like that, most of the time I stick my tongue out at him. But I thought if I stick my tongue out, he might ask me to leave his room. Instead, I asked him if he had gotten a good behavior report that day. Brian rolled his eyes. But then he said yes, and he said, it's kind of annoying that you want to check up on my behavior all the time, but I guess you are just trying to be a good kid. Then all of a sudden, I just started crying. I'm not a good kid, I told Brian. I'm a bad kid. I told him I wrote all kinds of bad stuff in my journal. I even wrote bad stuff about my very best friend. Brian laughed at me. I told him it was not nice to laugh at a crying little sister. And he said, it doesn't make you a bad kid just because you wrote some stuff in your journal that wasn't nice. You can write what you want in your journal. But everybody might find out the bad stuff I wrote, I said. I told him all about Tiffany and how Eric got my journal back, but that Tiffany still knew all the bad stuff I wrote. I told him about Bippo and Pecky and how I had to give a speech in front of the whole second grade. I said that Linny would be sad if I wrote my speech about how great Tiffany is, but Tiffany said I had to write about her. So what, you're going to let Tiffany boss you around for the rest of your life? Brian asked. I don't know, I told him. I guess so. Maybe I should move to Maryland too, but I would miss Mommy. But if you move to Maryland and I stay here, I will miss you, I said, and I started to cry again. I'm not moving to Maryland, dummy, Brian said. Dad has to travel too much for work, and there would be no one to stay with me. I just said that because I was mad. Oh, I said. I felt about a million times better in about two seconds. Plus, I have to stay here to make sure you don't do dumb stuff like let Tiffany Harris boss you around, Brian said. Just let her say what she wants to say and don't worry about it. That's pretty sad that she thinks she has to force people to play with her. Even though she's mean, it's sad no one likes her. I guess, I said, but I would like her if she would just be nice. I can't like her if she's mean all the time. And I can't like her if she just wants to play princesses all the time and won't let anyone else pick the games. And I can't like her if she tells all my private stuff. If she tells what I wrote, all my friends will be mad at me. Even if she tells what you wrote, your friends won't be mad for very long, Brian told me. Your friends are pretty cool. And plus, little kids don't have very good memories. We do too, I said. I can remember almost every time someone has made me mad since kindergarten. I can't really remember from preschool, though. Do you really think my friends are cool? I said, with lots of surprise. Yeah, they're okay, Brian said. I couldn't believe it. Am I cool? I wanted to know. You're cool if you don't let Tiffany Harris tell you what to do, Brian said. Just say whatever you want to say in your speech, 
And if she tries to tell you what to say, just say, it's a free country. It's a free country, I said. That's true. Then Brian asked me if I would be quiet so he could read. I turned to the back of my notebook and started writing my speech. That's the end of Thursday, November 18th in Kena Ford and the Secret Journal Mix-Up. Come back soon for Friday, November 19th, and that will probably be the rest of the book. See you then on Stories with Grandma.